EPS. Okay, we have done the FPS. Now we are doing EPS. So do you remember what is EPS? Employer yes. Payment Summary. Okay, so in EPS, um, normally employer reports the values, okay, almost similar to FPS. Okay, uh, like the report is almost similar to FPS, but employer will submit payment details that needs to be claimed from HMRC. Okay, that is in FPS, we report what we need to pay, like the taxes and other deductions, like NIC and any student loans. But in EPS, we report the statutory payments or any kind of claims, like construction industry deductions. There is one more uh, uh, deduction where, where we get employment uh, allowance also. Okay, so these are kind of claims that you can get from HMRC. Okay, like a discount or like a uh, refund of something like construction industry scheme. I'll explain you what happens. So mm -hmm. in construction industry, the industry, uh, the company has to pay a one off tax. That is a mm -hmm. high level. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, they have to pay a, a one off tax and then later on they can claim some discount based on mm -hmm. the actual tax what what has been incurred and there is some discount also which is provided later. So mm. they get the amount back. So these kind of amounts, whenever you want to take back from HMRC or uh, like the statutory payments, as you know, maternity employer pays first, like maternity, paternity, shared parental adoption, and then it is claimed from HMRC. Okay, so all these payments are sent through EPS to HMRC so that HMRC knows how much they need to pay back to the employer. Okay. It will be statutory payments wherever if you have employees on maternity or paternity adoption. Okay. So, for example, every month or every week, depending on your payroll, if you are doing every week payroll, so you'll pay some amount like SMP amount you'll pay. So, so every week you'll also report it to HMRC okay, through EPS that you have paid so and so SMP. Okay, and how much uh, HMRC will need to pay you back? HMRC will look into that if it is 92% or 103%. Okay, or every month if you pay, so every month you'll send the FPS. Ideally, companies send EPS normally every month. Okay, if it is a weekly payroll, then they collate everything together and they send in a month. Okay, so uh, it is almost same report. All the all the formats will be same like FPS. You'll see that when I explain you, but there are different, there are some addition columns, okay, that we'll see what are those additional columns. And there are some additional criteria, okay, that you uh, company has to check. Okay, so let's see the first uh, slide. There are certain circumstances when employer payment summary is submitted to HMRC, okay. So to recover and compensate statutory payments that I already told you, maternity, paternity and other payments okay to claim construction industry scheme deductions suffered okay this is something i al already explained you there will be a one-off tax that the company will pay at the start okay it is called uh, suffered because they have paid tax together additional one-off payment they have paid in advance okay this is only for construction industries okay if there is any wageless tax month do you remember this when you are not paying anyone any salary so you have to send eps stating that you will not pay anyone mm. okay to include apprenticeship levy okay what is this now so uh, this is something that employers get a discount okay so what will happen if empl employer has a bill that is total bill that it, it uh, of HMRC, like taxes and NICs, including all those bills. Bills means whatever they need to pay to HMRC. Okay, if the annual bill is pound three million and above, okay, they get apprenticeship levy. We'll see what is this apprenticeship levy, okay, in detail. So this is again to include apprenticeship levy, EPS needs to be sent to understand eligibility or ineligibility for the employment allowance. Now, what is employment allowance? Uh, 
if you remember we studied this in start okay so if an employer okay has eligibility of employment allowance so what will happen they get a discount in ni contribution that is employer ni contribution they get maximum discount of 5000 if you remember you also asked that question remember if it is less yeah so that is employment allowance mm -hmm. considering the employers ni allowance is being paid mm -hmm. so this is also again uh, one of the reason where eps could be sent EPS deadline. What is the deadline? Uh, you can use an EPS to report values that you cannot include on a full payment submission to HMRC. Okay, because you cannot send this value statutory payments and uh, other uh, yes. claims in FPS. So you have to send EPS. This figures may have an impact on the payments you make to HMRC on a monthly or quarterly basis. You see this? It, it is monthly and quarterly you can send. That is fine. Yes. Okay, but it's recommended you'd send it every month, it will be better. Okay. Only where employers are paying quarterly payments, then only it is recommended to use quarterly. Or self-employed people can use quarterly basis, that is also fine. Okay, you must also submit an EPS to notify HMRC when you claim your employment allowance. You need to check this. Uh, option okay in your when you send the eps you need to click this option in your online portal account okay that is hmrc online portal account there will be an option it will always pop up okay that you have not claimed the employment allowance so if you you have to check the eligibility if you uh, if you are eligible then you have to click that option as yes okay so it will automatically notify the hmrc when you uh, you have to click this option in your online account okay you don't need to uh, wait for some time okay <laughs> whenever you think you are eligible uh, you don't need to wait for any deadline like for example you are submitting your eps on 10th of following month okay so you don't need to say, uh, wait till 10th or you don't need to wait till 19th when hmrc will report you the values if you come to know about it if you think on 5th you are eligible you can tick this option on 5th okay it will uh, notify hmrc Okay, but HMRC will take action when they are calculating your values. When you are submitting the values to them, mm. they will calculate the values at that time only. So you don't need to follow any deadline for this tick option. Okay, you just need to keep this option tick in your online portal account. Okay, okay, whenever they are giving us the uh, payment in our online account. Okay, whenever they do the calculation, they will consider this. There, there is an i'll show you the screenshot in upcoming slides in module 13 i think 12 or 13 you will see that screen also of online account where you see this option like it gives you a pop-up that you have not claimed the employment allowance so if you if you are not eligible you can ignore that warning okay mm -hmm. it is a kind of reminder or warning you can say notification or mm -hmm. you can you can it reminds you because people forget companies forget about this option so mm -hmm. If you, if you think you are eligible, you can click on that option. Statutory payments and everything will be popped up automatically. You just need to validate that. You make the payment on 25th, for example. So you're submitting FPS on 25th by 25th. So mm -hmm. during this time, you can submit EPS, you're saying, right? Yeah, because yeah, EPS will can. also be ready that time. Yes, you can. Okay. Now, normally, P P uh, companies wait just for a few days uh, if there is any correction. Okay, then they send it okay because in eps you cannot correct you cannot send correction for eps then you have to correct it next month directly okay so that's the reason you get some more time for eps but you can uh, schedule one time as i said like you can follow one deadline internally that by 5th you want to send or by 30th you want to send okay So this employment allowance to do this from company setting, select the eligible for employment allowance checkbox. Okay. So as I said, send an EPS by 19th of the following text month so that HMRC can apply any reduction, such as statutory pay to what you will owe from your FPS. So this will help you reduce your uh, due to HMRC. If you need to pay some amount in FPS, 
then if you claim some amount like statutory payment you need to take back so it will reduce your burden to hmrc okay. that amount will be reduced sending an eps an employer normally five to ten between this date people follow companies follow the deadline of eps okay why because normally sixth is the start of the month okay six, six. so <laughs> yeah an employer needs to report your employee's pay, any payroll benefits and deductions in a full payment submission on or before their pay date. Okay, to claim reductions that you'll owe from your FPS, EPS needs to be sent by the 19th of the following tax month for HMRs. Send an EPS instead of an FPS if you haven't paid any employees in your tax month. Okay, so if you do not pay anyone, do not send FPS. There will be no values to report in FPS. But you have to send the EPS notifying that we are not paying anyone. Now, if you see the start of this EPS also has the same information that we had in FPS. Okay, like the HMRC office number, employer pay reference that I showed you on Friday. Okay, accounts office reference number, the related tax here, everything same here. There will be more columns which will be similar. Now, employers contracted out, I have explained you this, right? Contracted out number, that is employers contracted out number here, econ number. There we were studying SCON number, okay? That was state one, okay? This is employers contracted out pension scheme. Get this form, you're contracting out certificate or pension scheme administrator, okay? SAUTR, this will be extra that you will see your unique taxpayer reference for self-assessment. If you are a sole trader, okay, or the partnership UTR, if you are a partnership, okay, this is for a business. Co-tax reference, that is corporate. In, uh, in normal employer, if this, this doesn't apply, you can keep it blank. You don't need to report that number, okay? Then co-tax reference, your corporation tax re reference, if you are a limited company, okay? If you have more than one, enter the reference, for the company responsible for employment contracts. Okay, so this is also, you can keep blank if it is not applicable. Then you'll see same columns like we, we have seen in FPS, national insurance number will be the first column, then title of the employee. Okay, same way, the employee's national insurance number leave blank if you do not know it, but make sure you enter their address, okay? Same like FPS. Most of the, the common details will be like FPS. There will be only few columns uh, reduced in EPS compared to FPS and few columns addition compared to FPS. Okay, surname and forename or given name. Then initials, then initials of the employee, uh, then date of birth, gender, address same like fps you have to mention the correct address and if you do not have national insurance number this should be mentioned okay you don't need to send uh, if there is no change in address and you're already reported for existing employees you don't need to report every month only if there's a new hire or if there is a change in the address okay or else if you do not have the ni number so send the address uk postcode uh, same like FPS, foreign country, again, same like FPS that we've seen in FPS. You can stop me if you have any questions, okay? Because these are same, so I'm not uh, wasting time on it so that if possible, like we can close early. Then payroll ID, same. You have to send the, sorry, you have to assign a unique ID if there is a rehire. And if there is a change in employee ID, then you have to mention the new ID here. Okay, if for existing employees, there's a change in employee due to any reason, not because of rehire. Payroll ID change indicator, if there is a change in the employee ID due to any reason, then you have to take this indicator as yes. Then in the old payroll ID for this employment, you have to put the old employee ID here. And new employee ID in the main field, that is payroll ID. Okay, irregular payment pattern, as I explained, if there is a, uh, inconsistent payment to the employee, mainly the long-term sickness where uh, you're not paying anyone for three months or more. Okay, it is very critical. So you have to report to HMRC, otherwise HMRC will uh, have some uh, doubt if this is a lever case or what has happened. Okay, so they can just assume if you're not informing them what, 
what is happening. Okay. So you have to inform at least this is irregular payment. So HMRC will come to know, okay, that is fine. Otherwise, they will change the tax code and that will not be right. If someone is changing from employee to director, so you have to notify HMRC okay, that this is a director employee now. This is a director now. And if someone is changing from director to employee, then also you have to notify. So only director and others, other categories are in all the employees, common employees. All the type of employees apart from directors will be same. Only directors will be treated differently. Okay. Then same taxable pay will be here and tax deducted or refund because it will have same information. EPS, you're sending EPS, it doesn't mean that you will not send the employee salary, but employees receiving gross salary. So you have to repeat that payments again. Student loan repayment, postgraduate loan repayment. And similarly, pay after statutory deduction, net pay, deductions from net pay. That is like uh, any other deduction you have made, such as payment towards child maintenance, which is where you do not get the tax benefit. Okay, on strike. If employees on strike and we have reduced employee salary due to strike, non tax or national insurance contribution payment where there is no tax and national insurance applicable. Okay, any payment made to the employee that is not subject to pay tax or national insurance, like 30,000 redundancy. One example I can tell you student loan plan type. Here you have to mention the plan type of employee's loan. Okay, this will be auto populated. Okay, normally this is auto populated. So you don't need to mention because when you do a structure of your payslip, okay, when you do a structure of your gross to net, so it is the same rule apply for FPS and EPS. So same value what you what is populated in gross to net, it will fall in these categories. Okay, so in UK, the software is uh, very well uh, managed. Okay, like they have prepared it so good that these details are automatically populated. Only you have to review it one or two cases at times due to some system error, it may not reflect. So you need to find reason, okay, why it is and you can fix it and you can include in the FPS and EPS. So that is the only task you have to do. You don't need to enter everything manually. Okay? Only in case of manual payroll where you don't have a software or else uh, the software which is not supporting FPS and FPS, only that time you have to do it manually. Then employee pension contribution net under uh, net pay arrangements and not paid under net pay arrangements similarly, like FPS, same like cumulative figure, why did you fear? Here, these are the extra columns you will see. Okay, why? Because these are the main attraction of this uh, EPS report. Okay, so this is the main benefit uh, which is uh, claimed by company, okay? All the YTD figures, SMP, and you'll come to know why YTD figures in upcoming columns, okay? So statutory maternity pay, YTD, maternity YTD, adoption YTD, shared parental also YTD, all the YTD figures from April till the current month, whatever you have paid. Now in SHPP, SHPP means shared parental. Do you remember what is shared parental? Do you remember? So in that case, it could be possible that your male partner, uh, the male partner is in another company, okay? And female is in another company. So whenever employee is claiming SHPP, so employee will need to give some extra information. The employer as well as employer will need to give it to HMRC also, because what will happen? At the end, HMRC needs to keep a watch, okay? If the wife has really returned to work, Okay, if this is genuine case, so that wife is also not receiving SMP. So what will HMRC check? This employee is receiving SHPP, okay? Then they will have the wife's details also, NIC number and all. Okay, they will check wife's payment, what she is receiving, if she's receiving SMP or not. If she's receiving normal salary, then they will understand, okay, this is fine. So they keep a watch on this, okay? So the employee, whenever they claim shared parental, they need to share these details with employer, uh, employer oh. and then employer will share with HMRC. You see this option, okay? So first is partner surname or family name. Then second option is, second column is forename, okay? And given name, then partner second name or given name if there is, and then fourth column you see, national insurance number of partner, okay? So national insurance number is important. So this way HMRC keeps track of everything. So they've man managed it very well. The structure, mm -hmm. I really like their payroll. Okay, so then uh, pay benefits through payroll. 
okay similarly if you are paying any benefits through payroll so you have to report it here okay why did you figure and the value in that month item subject to class 1 national insurance only that is the total of and able salary employee tax code will also be mentioned then tax basis will be mentioned number of earnings periods covered by payment okay same like fps then employee hours this is again extra okay which you have not seen in fps these two columns so what is this employee hours normally worked okay this is the part time you asked about it right part time if the employee is part time or full time okay. so uh, in uk uh, it is like monthly payroll if you are paying monthly so uh, the payment will not be divided based on working days okay so it will be full month if it is 22 days working days in in one month then whatever is full month salary that will be considered for that month every month same salary will be considered like annual salary is 20 for example annual salary is 24000 so every month 2000 is the monthly salary so it will not change based on working days lop when you do directing lop then it depends how company is following that pattern normally what they do like they divide uh, it will change for lop it will change like they will take the base of that month how many days are there working days 22 or 21 then they will multiply with the number of lop days okay this is the normal pattern and holiday pay if you consider holiday pay then they will do it on annual basis okay lop is considered on monthly basis based on their month okay because it you know the specific date right you know the specific date so for example it is the lop is in august 5 days so you will take august base deduct the lop for holiday pay if you are paying holiday pay to someone like we have earned leaves when someone is leaving the organization you are paying earned leaves for example you are paying 10 leaves okay you don't know the dates Okay, you just know that this ten day earn leave you need to pay to the employer. At that time, what you have to do, you have to take annual formula. Okay, do you know that formula? What we do annually? Uh, calculation that I have shown you for other calculation, it remains same. So if it is, uh, uh, you know the annual salary. Okay, you divide it by weekly salary. Okay, mm -hmm. that is divided by fifty two. You get weekly salary. Okay, then if you uh, know like how many days employee works, if employee works five days, you can divide by five, so you get one day holiday pay. So you can multiply with ten. Okay, this is standard in global culture. US, US, you might have done it. Uh, it is fifty-two. They follow. Okay, there will be different kind of employment. Okay, there will be flexible workers also in UK, US. I don't know about US, but like you mentioned about doctors, okay? In UK, it is not only for doctors. There will be flexible hours. Anyone can take flexible hours. Like yeah. one employee yeah. can work yeah. Monday, they can work four hours. Tuesday, they can work six hours. In UK, they say flexi hours, flexi hours or flexible working. So now we have flexi means I think after COVID, we call it like uh, uh, like. Two days office or three days office and two days work. And normally, some people call it flexi hybrid model. Okay, mm -hmm. but in UK, the flexi working means they can choose their hours. Okay, mm -hmm. if they want to work part time, part time is straightforward. Like every day four hours or five hours. Flexible, it could be employees working. There are also chances wherein employees working Monday to Thursday in one week and next week. he or she is working tuesday to friday okay this pattern is also uh, uh, like they can choose in uk if the employer allows so they can choose these kind of options also so it is difficult at times for to calculate the salary so we have to report the hours you don't need to uh, report the employees category if employees are part time or uh, like uh, you don't need to report the uh, status like uh, the payment sorry The em employment type, like if it is employees, a full time or part time or a contingent staff or a contractor, you don't need to report that. You just need to report the hours category. Okay, so when you put A, if you have less than sixteen hours, employee works less than sixteen hours in a week. Okay, the working pattern is B. If you have sixteen to twenty three point ninety nine hours, okay, not twenty four exact, less than twenty four, sixteen to less than twenty four. See if you have twenty four to less than thirty. Okay. Similarly, D if you have more thirty hours or more. So for full timers, it will go into 
normally 30 uh, d okay if you do not pay your employees on a regular basis or if you pay them on a workplace pension or annuity enter e annuity is again pension as i told you the only difference will be workplace pension this is already defined by employer that will pay this this much amount every month or every quarter or every every year after retirement annuity is something employee gets full amount and they invest again in a scheme to convert it to a pension amount okay that buy a pension scheme pay frequency also you have to let uh, let hmrc know in eps mm -hmm. okay so put w1 for weekly w2 for fortnight pay payroll w4 for every four weeks okay m1 for monthly m3 for quarterly m6 for half yearly that is twice a year and ma for annual payroll so normally it is m1 so you'll see mostly then io for one-time payments only like there could be organization who is working on commission basis the employees are being paid on commission basis or shares or whatever mm. they are receiving this will be ad hoc it is not proper salary mm. or IR for irregular payments you can select for multiple employees if employees paid monthly but normally what uh, employer does they do not uh, send this together because if it is a weekly payroll then they will send all weekly employees together okay and monthly separately but they can send it together also it is fine okay like I told you uh, if there is a weekly payroll they can report monthly also that is fine okay there could be one department which is paid weekly, one department which is paid monthly. So you can include both of them in a report. Mm -hmm. The only problem will be during validations. If you put some formula, you'll need to ensure that weekly is calculated separately. So there is a reason it is also fine if you send separate. Okay. Now payment date, the date you paid them. Okay. Same like FPS, tax week number. Okay. Same payment date you have to mention here. So they will match it. Tax week number and tax month number. If it is weekly payroll, okay. If you're monthly payroll, you mention tax month number. Here you have to put the tax number which is provided by the bank. Okay, only enter this if you're paying them with your own service user number via tax. So we have to make arrangement of the payment and pay to in a third party before payroll. It will be well in advance, like. Uh, you cannot do it later stage because uh, it may take uh, time for third party to move the account move to the account and arrange like it will take at least four or five days so you have to do it in uh, before five four or five days of pay date aggregated un earnings indicator only put yes if you have added their earnings from multiple jobs to calculate their national insurance normally do, uh, companies do not do it Okay, but if you're doing like only put yes, if you've added their earnings from multiple jobs to calculate their NI, okay, then you can put the aggregated earnings indicator as yes, but it could be possible that this is uh, why this option is open. If there is a group, like if there is a, a single company when they have multiple entities, so they can follow this. Okay. If they want to reduce their burden, they can report in one EPS. That's what I said. If it's the same entity, sorry, if it's the same company or a group, they can do it for the same entity, for their entities. Okay. Then mandatory fields in EPS to reclaim statutory pay for parents and construction industry schemes. Okay. These are the mandatory fields. So here you'll see tax month again. Put the tax month for which EPS credit is required. Like, if you are claiming SMP for November, so you have to mention the tax month of November. Okay, that is April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. That is eighth. Okay, then SMP claim reclaim this tax year. Indicate how much statutory maternity pay you have received. Now you understand why we are claiming YTD figure. Okay, so this is again. So what will happen if two months amount is pending? So HMRC mm -hmm. comes to know, okay, uh, the, the YTD is so much and two months amount is spending. Okay, whatever they have paid, they will minus it with the YTD figure. That is the reason it is shown. So they will match with their values also, whatever is paid and whatever is spending. So it should match, okay? And that's the reason APS should be sent early. Then SMP National Insurance Contribution Compensation recovered this. 
Okay, this is national insurance contribution also. So indicate the amount of NI contribution compensation you have received through small employers relief. Okay, so SMP national insurance contribution compensation received, sorry, recovered through this this tax year for the SMP amount. Okay, if there is a contribution of NI due to SMP, okay, only that amount, not the entire amount. Same for SPP, paternity, okay, national insurance again. Same that amount has been received from HMRC till now. Same for SAP, that is adoption. Same columns you'll see. And then SHPP also, same columns you'll see. Only sickness you'll not see here. Okay, that is the reason sickness is also shown separately. Sickness is not paid back by the HMRC. Now, if there is a CIS deduction suffered, enter the total amount of CIS deduction suffered year to date. If you have paid two installments of tax of one off payment, you can mean uh, you can mention the two amounts that you have paid. Okay, till date. If you are a limited company that has had CIS deduction made from payments received for work in the construction industry. Okay. So I'll explain you more on this, okay? CS deduction. So in second half, CS deduction and apprenticeship levy, we'll see that topic. Bank details. Now, bank details is important. Where HMRC will pay you, okay? Because here you need to claim the amount. So this is the, uh, this is the field that you have to fill for the bank details of your company, okay? Because you are uh, sending the details to HMRC and FPS. So HMRC will check and report this employee already. Okay. And in the EPF, I think we have different account, UN, PF number, that's the reason. Uh, in, in UK, they are adding this employee based on NIC number. Mm -hmm. So they don't have multiple, so they don't need to do this. Okay. Then mm -hmm. this is employment allowance option. Like I explained to you, this is um, the discount the company can take uh, for the NIC contributions. So if you, are, you can claim employment allowance, you could save up to pound 5,000. Okay, this is 4,000 is old amount mm -hmm. per year on your national insur insurance per year. Okay, mm -hmm. So it could be less also like uh, we have seen earlier. So amount could be less also. Employment allowance indicator. Now this option you have to take. Put yes to the claim to claim the allowance. This is your declaration that you've checked your eligibility to receive employment allowance. So it is not blindly we have to take this option. We have to check if we are eligible. Okay. As I've shown you that eligibility in uh, like I think fourth session or fifth session I've shown you. Okay, so uh, we'll see that again. Okay, if you want, I can go back to that slide. So if you do not check your eligibility or your answer incorrectly, you may have to repay any employment allowance you have received. So it could be possible by mistake, uh, government has also given you that discount, but later on they find that you are not eligible for it. Then they will ask you to repay the uh, employment allowance benefits. Okay, so they will deduct that amount. Hmm. Employment allowance must be claimed each tax year. <laughs> the claim will be retained for the full tax year and the following year, you will need to submit a new claim. Okay, so it could be possible that you are claiming it in two, two uh, AMIs, uh, two, sorry, two installments also, but maximum you can take 5,000 only. And if uh, next year, you can claim the additional. Okay, you can claim only 5,000 a year. Only select no if you're not eligible to claim or want to withdraw a claim. Okay. If your claim is rejected, you'll receive a generic notification message to advise you. Withdraw claim means you have uh, ticked that option. Yes, mm -hmm. by mistake. And now you want to withdraw that. Okay. Maybe uh, you have understood like what is employment allowance? If employee, employer earns, okay, uh, like employer's contribution, is less than one lakh of employee uh, and employer and I see around. Mm. Okay, that is something that you have to check. If mm. you and we check it based on previous year. Okay, what employers they check <clears throat> previous year how much was the uh, profit and how much was the earnings. Then they claim employment allowance this year also. But mm. suddenly there is a spike, for example, in one month. Then they have to withdraw that we are not eligible for employment allowance now. 
okay suddenly there is a big profit or the company has more contribution okay so that could be possible they have paid a good bonus to the employee this year or they are adding for example uh, they are adding one new entity which has thousand employees so thousand plus thousand now there will be two thousand employees so company size is big now so they, they are not eligible for employment allowance possibly so they can withdraw that claim if your business engages in economic activity activity you must include your business sector on your eps okay let's see what is economic activity when claiming employment allowance if you engage in economic activity which means you sell goods or services on the market okay de minimis state aid rules apply to you and your business sectors is required as part of your claim so you have to i also mention the business sector okay if you are into economic activity what is economic activity you are selling goods or services on the market okay that is called economic activity then you can claim employment allowance and there is a de minimis state aid rules apply these are some uh, rules where employers get some kind of benefits from government due to their business okay that is not, that has nothing to do with payroll okay this is just for an information okay so let's see more what kind of business sector are there so there are these business sectors where you have options also to fill in eps employer is in the agriculture sector so you can take this option okay choose this option if you are engaged in economic activity and your company is in the agriculture sector so this is also a kind of economic activity like economic sector okay employer is in the fisheries and aquaculture sector so you have to take this option okay employers is in the road transport sector so choose this option if you are engaged in this activity okay then employees in the industrial or other sector apart from these three okay or in industrial sector so this this sector should be chosen if your company engages in economic activity but is not in agriculture fisheries and aquaculture or road transport it is also economic activity but it is something different from these four sectors that we have seen so there is no options available in eps then you have to tick on this okay examples of this option are services utilities merchandising manufacturing could be anything like this business such as a hairdresser or a restaurant would come under this sector as they offer goods and services choose this option if you are engaged in economic activity and your company is in the industrial or other sector okay apart from this because these are normally linked with uh, direct developments of the country and uh, economic situation of the country so that's the reason they have this in broader options okay then anything falls in, in other you can click on this option okay state aid rules do not apply to the employer okay this should only be used when a company does not engage in any economic activity okay this could be ticked okay mm -hmm. then if they are not in economic activities they can click on this option example of this option is a small education charity Hmm. employing staff to teach english as a second language at no cost in the local community so this is kind of a charitable organization okay this is just an example one of the example these employees will continue to be eligible for the allowance but it will no longer be considered a de minimis state aid in this circumstances circumstances hmm. okay so employment allowance there is a different criteria that hmm. still applies okay only this additional rules is not applicable okay this has nothing to do with the calculations this is something that hmrc wants to know now report apprenticeship levy okay so if you want let's see uh, i'll check the module where employment allowance was there i can explain you that can you see it here in the module 4 applying employment allowance so here we'll see employment allowance allows eligible employers to reduce their annual insurance liability up by up 5000 per annum you will pay less employers class 1 national insurance each time you run your payroll until 5000 has gone 
for the tax clearance. You can only claim against your employer's class one insurance. Okay, employers. That is employer part. Liability up to maximum five thousand pounds. Can still claim the allowance if your liability was less than five thousand a year. The less amount also you can claim. I am eligible for employment allowance. How the company checks? Okay, this is a question, and we have to fulfill these criteria. Okay, do you have a business or run a charity? Okay, if both are yes, then one criteria is met. The second criteria is do you have at least one employee? There should be employee in the organization. Then only class one is applicable, right? So the second criteria will also met, uh, meet. Then the third criteria is are your national insurance liabilities in the previous tax year less than one lakh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, so if suddenly there is a spike and the national insurance liabilities go up in one or two months, then employer may think that, okay, we are not eligible for employment allowance and that time they can withdraw it. Now let's see apprenticeship level. Employers with an annual pay bill of more than pound three million who, and who are, who are connected to the other employers through companies or charities and have a total annual pay bill of more than three pounds, pound three million. Okay, so if the organization bills, that is the HMRC payments, are more than three, three million pounds in a year. Okay, or if there are multiple organization connected. Okay, like uh, as we talked about one organization where there are multiple entities. So the total of their bills, okay, like ABC company, XYZ company and STD company. Okay, so three companies total bill, if they are in the same organization, they are linked. Okay, if there is any charity also, these are linked. Okay, so this is all applicable for them as well. Okay, all together, they will be treated as in a total. You and have a total annual pay bill of more than three million pounds must notify HMRC about their apprenticeship levy beginning in April 2017. Okay, so in this case, they are eligible for apprenticeship levy, so they can inform HMRC about it through EPS. Okay, so construction industry scheme and apprenticeship levy. We'll see more around this. Okay. First, we'll complete this module and we'll see. Now, tax year. Enter the tax year for which the apprenticeship levy return is due. Then, employer's HMRC office number, it employer's payee reference. Put the payee reference to which the apprenticeship levy return relates. Okay, if there are multiple organizations, so which organization does it deserve it? Or sorry, which uh, uh, um, which organization uh, is eligible for it? Employers accounts office reference. Then this is the same number that we have seen in this first slide. Annual apprenticeship levy allowance amount. Annual apprenticeship amount allowance is allocated to the employer's pay reference. So I think it is fifteen thousand pounds. Okay, around, which is the allowance amount. But we'll see that. Apprenticeship levy due year to date. The total uh, allowance amount, which is due. If it is in two installments, or if it is uh, like 10,000, 5,000 in two amounts, then the total will be mentioned here, whatever is claimed. Like for example, you have claimed this month, and three months back also there was some claim. So why did we figure? Will be mentioned. Tax month. Enter the tax month for which the apprenticeship levy return is due. Yeah, so what will happen? This this can be divided between those companies also. If three companies are claiming it together, then the allowance amount will be divided between them. They will be eligible for total uh, same amount. They'll mm -hmm. not get like if it is total fifteen thousand for every company, then total fifteen thousand will be distributed between them. Like they can buy five five five. Okay. Hmm. okay. And if it is a single company, then they will get the full benefit of 15,000 allowance. After you have sent EPS, now like we are learning about FPS, what will be after EPS is sent? 
So view your claimed amount and the balance you owe on HMRC online account within two days. Okay, you see this? If you send it early, you can again see EPS value also in two days. So it will be better. You can claim that reduction. Okay, as we discussed, like you can just pay the difference so that, yeah, it doesn't take more time. The last day of paying HMRC is 22nd or 19th if paying by post. If you made a mistake in your EPS, you can send an EPS with correct year to date figures to correct a mistake in the current tax year. Okay, for previous tax year, send an EPS with the correct year to date figures for the tax year in which you made the error. Okay, this is for yearly correction. If there is a mistake in previous month submission, then adjust your monthly values on your next submission. You see this? I told you. You cannot send additional EPS. Make sure the correct year to date values are shown on the final confirmation screen. So, uh, the final confirmation, which means like the latest amount that HMRC will share with you oh. okay, on the online account, on the online HMRC account, you should get the final confirmation that HMRC will update your account. This one is the final confirmation uh, screen that we receive as a pop-up. Okay, mm -hmm. the correction, when you send EPS corrections, Okay, that is next month. If there is a mistake in your previous month submission, then adjust your monthly values on your next submission to make sure the correct year to do. Oh, no, no, what I told you is correct. Values are shown on final confirmation. Sorry to confuse you again. I thought I, I, I've explained something else. Okay, so it should be final confirmation screen. That is HMRC will update your account. If you do not pay any employees in a tax month, same like you have to report EPS. So this will be the option that you'll find in EPS. Okay, if any employee did not get any payment in a period, send an EPS with the following information by the 19th of the month, following the tax month in which you would you did not pay any employees. The tax month begins on the 6th. In this case, do not send an EPS. So no payment for period, select yes to inform HMRC that you did not pay any employees. No payment dates from, okay, if there is a multiple period that you are not going to pay, then you can start, put 6th of the first month as the date when you did not pay any employees. So if you're starting this month, you have to start with this month. You can select 6th of this month. No payments dates to, so till the month you think you will not be paying the employees. In the three months, you can select the end date of three months ahead, like uh, November to January. Okay, or now November to February. <clears throat> Period of inactivity from the HMRC in advance if you'll not be paying any employees for a minimum period of one month and a maximum of 12 months. Put the sixth of the first month on hold and you can on, only notify employees from the start of the next tax month. You can only, yeah, there's a longer period you can mention it here. Period of inactivity start date two. Set aside the fifth of the previous month to not pay any employees. Okay, so period of inactivity two will be set aside the fifth of the previous month, not pay any employees. If you do not pay anyone for a longer period, this slide, there is some change, should have been earlier. Ah, no, 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 this is correct. Not if you have made no payments to employees or directors in the earlier period of one month, sorry, one or more complete tax months, then HMRC may send a notice estimating how much you owe. And this may result in a penalty. That's the reason it is important for you to notify that we are not paying anyone. To inform HMRC, go to RTI on the menu bar. Okay. After clicking new, select EPS. This is in your software. Okay. This facility will be in the software not in the HMRC online account. This will be in the software. In this section, select no payment for the period marker. Okay, mention the start and end date of the tax month in which no payments were made. Okay, after checking all the dates, details, click okay. 